Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to GSL Uncut. Thank you so much for being here. On this episode of the podcast, Melissa and I had the privilege of traveling over to the northwest portion of Montana, to the Yak Territory, where we shared a conversation with Tom and Nancy Orr. Tom and Nancy have been on the hit TV show Mountain Men, which you can find on the History Channel, for well over a decade now, and in that time, they have inspired millions of fans. They are incredible folks. Literally, you don't run into people like this nowadays. We had a lengthy discussion about their upbringing, how it is that they met, their challenges in living in such a rugged territory, and their old rodeo days. We had a lot of fun being in their place. They were so gracious. They actually allowed us into their home to speak with them. We enjoyed the conversation so much, and we hope that you enjoy listening to it. Without any further ado, here are Tom and Nancy Orr. Tom and Nancy Orr, thank you so much for having us onto your property. We really appreciate your openness and willingness to have us here uh, for to share our conversation. And we are looking forward to getting to know you more. And uh, this is a huge thrill for us. We are very excited. So thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> so we want to start from the beginning with you guys. So we'd love to hear how you met, how you ended up out here. And that way we can we can just kind of understand a little bit better. Well, I first met Tom when he was about 16, and I thought he was cute, but he was only 11, <laughs> so I went in the house. <laughs> and um, he was friends with the guy that lived next door to us, and over the years, life goes on, and we ended up together and lived in Illinois in a little cabin out in Pecatonica, Illinois, woods. And anyway, we wanted to move to the mountains and ended up right out here and <laughs> I think the summer of 77 we went rodeoing and ended up out here and the, we had friends that lived out of Troy Beck and John Bader and so we met them and really liked it and ended up finding a place to rent in Troy moved out here in the dead of winter which I wouldn't do now <laughs> after he sold all his muskrats bought an old red truck a friend said you got to have a pickup truck tire chains and a chainsaw so we had a friend give us tire chains, bought the truck with the muskrats, and went to Farm and Fleet and got the home light chains. <laughs> Way yeah. we went in the dead of winter. I wouldn't do that now. Wow. Anyway. Yeah, through the Dakotas and the cold. Mm. Oh, yes. Anyway, just never thought of anything being wrong, which it worked out. <laughs> yeah. Came here, he met an old trapper named Vern Blanchard that had a cabin in the yak. We haven't left. The rest We're is history. Still here. 45 yeah. years later, we don't want to leave. Well, it's a beautiful place that you have here. And you said you. Montana appealed to you from a freedom aspect, yes. correct? Yes. Uh, what was what was here initially when you guys showed up on this particular property? What was here? Same as what's here now, except See. our house. Yeah. So I mean, a lot of country, a lot of woods, you know, wildlife, lots of birds. Um, all the things of nature that feeds our souls. Right. You know, you could stand outside and listen to the heartbeat of nature, and mm -hmm. it just gave you something good. So is that what you really fell in love with, the both of you? I know both of you I spend a lot so. of time outdoors, and yeah, again, it's a beautiful yeah, we're, spot. We're outdoor people. Too, yeah. You know I mean? Mm -hmm. we, we appreciate the outdoors mm -hmm. and, and what it is. And, and you still I rodeoed quite a while. Yeah, yeah. I, I rodeoed for about five or six years after we moved oh, okay. out here, too. Yeah. And then finally, finally the kids started beating me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He came home and he said, those kids are beating me, and if it's not fun, I'm not doing it anymore. And he quit on yeah. his own call. And so in looking you up and doing research on you, you were a top-level, like top-tier rodeo professional, correct? Uh, I guess you could call me that. Yeah. yeah. I saw some photos that Melissa actually found of you. So impressive. And I'm I'm yeah. sitting here a little baffled and wondering how it is that you still get around as well as you do, given all of the uh well, that's all that's all luck. That's luck. <laughs> and all, I prayed it's hard. All luck. <laughs> well, I think it paid off because it's it's seriously We're, baffling. You're still to me. Up, right? Amazing. Yeah. I read a story where you took a really bad fall and you were knocked unconscious. In well, that Florida. Was, that was easy. Was yeah, easy. he didn't know anything. I was the one looking at him in the yeah. hospital bed. Yeah, so what was, was that like for you? Purple. Yeah, you were in the audience when that happened. I was, yeah. He was he was whacked in the noggin, that's for sure. Mm. My old woolly booger, a bully, yeah. was on. Uh, Eli tried to find a picture of that bull. He was like, I heard him doing his little talk into the, he's all woolly bugger woolly, woolly bugger bull and all he was finding was caterpillars he's like this isn't the bull he, was, <laughs> he wanted to see the bull that hurt you so. it ended yeah. up the bull died 
few weeks yeah, the, later. The really? bull died a couple of weeks later. You got the and best I of told, them. I told him, I said, he'd give me a concussion. I gave him one. Because <laughs> you guys hit heads. Yeah, it was our heads that hit. Yeah. And, so, and I was tied onto him, so I was dragging on the side. And there was, there was only one bullfighter, but he finally got in and lifted me up with one arm and got my hand out of that rope with wow. one hand. Wow. He did it all by himself, you know, which is really quite because I was just dragged. And, yeah. yeah, and you were out. He so was a flopping yeah. and a popping. Oh, I can't Scary. even imagine I think that witnessing that. Bullfighter's name was Larry Meachie. Yeah, Larry Meachie. I Michi. think he's gone now, but hmm. wow, he saved him. Sounds like it. Yeah. But you know, in all reality, I rode saddle Bronx for 25 years, I rode bulls for 18 years. I never broke an arm or a leg. Or wow. I broke my, my skull several oh, yeah, times. Yeah, nothing to it. You know? Wow. I never broke an arm or a leg or a hand or a, a rib. collarbone. Broke, a, broke the tip of a rib one time. Wow. You know? That's amazing. Yeah. Think about All it. All things when, considered. When Cartilage in your knees. Yeah, I had, I've had both knees operated on for broken cartilages. Okay. But that mm. was Smashed a finger. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, for, <laughs> compared, to, all the injuries. compared to all the injuries, all my buddies went through broken necks and backs wow. and arms and legs and mm. all that. And I think, I, wow, how lucky I was. You yeah. Know? Oh, amazing. Yeah. So did you ever ride bulls after that incident? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. I slowed down a little bit. I was, I was like 30 then, probably. When, oh, so when you that happened, still rode you know? for a while. that thirty-five is pretty old for a bull rider. Yeah, you know, really. Yeah, or bronc riders and stuff. Like I rode broncs till I was forty-one. So like, wow. like bronc riding is something that's more controlled. I mm. mean, like, like you can be getting bucked off of a bronc and make a decision maybe of what side you want to be thrown off of. I mean, once you know you're going, you're mm -hmm. going. So you, you pick out the safest way out. There's a fence here, the pickup man's mm -hmm. over here or something. And you you about have a choice of where you get off at. But yeah. with the bulls, sometimes you're you're on the ground before you ever knew you were going <laughs> to yeah. leave the bull. You know? so <laughs> that's amazing. That's, with the horses, there was a lot more. A lot more control. Okay. I didn't know which would be more difficult. I've never been on a bull, obviously, but I've been on a bucking horse, and yeah. that seems yeah. difficult enough, but then I hear the bulls are a whole nother. Yeah, well, yeah, like I say, you don't know what's happening, and they're, they're so fast, and and horses hardly ever spin like most bulls do. Oh, you know, yeah. Most <laughs> horses go out, and if they bring a half circle, that's, yeah. that's the best ones to ride, really. For a high yeah. score? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I score yeah. if they come back to the judges, you know. Right. I mean, it's one thing if they go right down the arena away from the judges, they're trying to look. But if the horse comes around back to the judges, they get higher more, score. You get more yeah. chance of yeah. being able to show off a little bit, you know, if you can, if you're capable of it. Yeah. I, Eli, he watches so much of it. We've gotten to know all the Brazilians and <laughs> all the bulls. What's your favorite bull, Eli? Bushwhacker, oh, bushwhacker. Yeah. Yeah. legendary. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. And then he wanted to know if you guys ever met Lane Frost, and no, no that, that no. was his. I one was great in the guy. International Rodeo Association, yeah. which is different from the PRC. Oh, okay. It's like a, it's like a the next smallest association. Okay. I mean, it was, it was it went all over in all the states and everything. But it was yeah, just, mostly Midwest. Yeah. Mostly Midwest, but Mostly. I, I've rodeoed in 44 different states. Wow. So. That's pretty neat. Have you guys ever gone to the big PBR show where they do the fireworks and everything mm -mm. like that? Mm. That's yeah. an experience. Yeah. <laughs> his son, Tom's son, Chad, in Florida would go to the PBRs and take his kids, and he said it's quite a performance. Oh, it yeah. is. It's like a rock concert yeah. and rodeo yeah. combined. Yeah. We had no idea. We were in Fort Worth, and we brought the kids to the stockyard, and we were going to go to their little rodeo that they do there every night. And then we heard, we saw all these bull riders walking around, and Eli was recognizing them. That's so-and-so. Oh, and, wow. And, and we're like, well, they must be the Something the Rattlers on. were performing that night. Uh, and they were handing teams. out free tickets to it. And we're like, we have to go. We have to take yeah. them. We have to do it. 
And maybe that was a mistake because now he's just like, he was a, he was a bull rider for Halloween and that's what he's doing. So we told him we're driving a long ways today and he just really, really wanted to come and just sit there and, and listen. So, Aww. yeah. He's, what do got, you, he's got the bug. Yeah, he yes. certainly does. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't talk him out of it. <laughs> <laughs> We've tried. Yeah. Yeah. So this, so your love for horses and rodeo and trapping and everything goes way back for, to your dad. So tell Ooh. us a little bit about your dad, because I find that so fascinating. My dad worked for one of the last of the old Wild West shows. The Wild West shows is where the cowboys got paid for riding bucking horses. Yeah. Everybody, everybody got paid for it. And my dad worked for one of the last of them old Wild West shows. And when my brother and I turned seven years old, my dad taught us a trick ride. And so from the time I was seven, every summer we packed up the horses and we went off on the rodeo trail. We rodeoed all summer till we had to come back to go to school in the fall. So what a bummer, my, huh? <laughs> yeah. my whole life has been been rodeos, I mean, from the time I was a little kid. Yeah. So I knew from the time I was seven, I wanted to be a bull rider. Yeah. You know, like like your boy probably. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it was something that was just was just going to happen. And, <laughs> and and I don't know, the, the well, we worked for this Wild West show for years until I was like 15. Oh, from wow. the time I was seven until I was 15. Every summer we'd be out on the rodeo trail, my brother and I trick road, and, and we even did some other little horse acts and stuff along the way. And my dad was a pickup man and a bulldogger and and also drove one of the semis that hauled the livestock oh, okay. from one rodeo to yeah. the other. And, and that's kind of how it all started. And the, the stack, the guy that owned the Wild West show, uh, that, so he he knew I wanted to be a bull rider, so he'd he'd have the guys run a bulldog and steer into the chutes during the bull riding. So every performance, I got a chance to get on one of these steers. I had a oh, little bull rope and everything. I'd yeah. Play out of my little head. yeah. So how old were you when you rode your first steer? Well, I was like twelve. Oh, okay. Yeah. Eli's pretty convinced that 10 is old enough. <laughs> it's not. I know. He keeps telling me, Mom, how about 10? His body, his body needs to grow more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, and not be broken. I told yeah. him maybe mutton bust. And he rides the sheep now. Mm -hmm. And the poor sheep just you stands need there. You sheep. Yeah. He rides Manny. Our, he's about 250 pounds. And, but he can't get Manny to go. He just stands there and chews his cud. And <laughs> Eli's up there doing this. Yeah. Well, it's still practice. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe that horse of yours will do him. Huh? Yeah, I know. Maybe I'll transfer him to that horse. I think the pony's meaner than my big... Yeah, if you can catch it. <laughs> if I can catch that pony, Ponies yeah. Ponies are like that. Yeah. Oh, gosh. No. So, Nancy, how about for you? How did you grow up? What's your backstory? And is it is it in a very drastic contrast to the life that you currently live here in Montana? Yeah, totally different. Yeah. Other than we lived in the country and... Okay. Um, I liked the outdoors and tagging along behind my big brother when he'd go fishing. and um, But nothing like Tom's. I was kind of just a shy kid that would hide behind my mother if there were too many people <laughs> in the room. <laughs> he got used to crowds and people and all yeah. that. But, yeah, just grew up as a kid with a nice mom and dad and two nice brothers and didn't know the whole world wasn't like that. Yeah. yeah. Good life. Good. That's awesome. Yeah, that's nice. Did you rodeo as well? No. No barrel racing or <laughs> <No>. anything? <laughs> just along to support? So no, that must be, yeah. Different, just a, more of a normal <laughs> life. Quote, unquote. Yeah. Yeah. So th when did the trapping start? Oh, as a, as a teenager, I started trapping back in Illinois and, and I don't know, it just kind of evolved from there. I always was a history, into the old history of the mountain men and stuff. So this all really appeals to me. Yeah. You know? And like, like one of the things I did do besides trapping is I learned how to brain tan buckskin the way the Native Americans did it. And... 
when I learned how to do that. And then, then we moved away. I mean, we ended up living up here in the Yak, and there aren't any jobs up here. Mm-hmm. No. I mean, oh, a couple of years I went and planted trees with the Forest Service to, to make money, you yeah. know. But other than that, there's no jobs. So, mm-hmm. like, like we were uh, hung up on we had to do something for a living. Mm-hmm. And here... We moved to this country, and everybody up here, they go out and they kill their deer, and they throw the hides in the dumpsters. Really? Oh. You know, they don't, the hides, deer skins aren't worth anything, yeah. you know, so everybody throws them away. Hmm. So here it was. I could come here, and I could get deer skins. I mean, why did I tan 100 deer skins one year? Wow. wow. You know, so you could get deer skins, and that's really how we basically made our living you know yeah. off of that and trapping yeah. and that was the neat thing about it to be able to do what you wanted to do for yeah. a living and live here yeah. where we live you yeah know, never have to drive to go to work unless it's to skin a buck for somebody down the road or yeah something, right know. yeah it's a beautiful thing to yeah. so find it, it was, your passion it was real neat to be able to all of we never made fifteen thousand dollars in a year. Mm. Uh, yeah, you, know? you never even made twelve. <laughs> <laughs> but yet we we bought a, we bought land and we built a we built a house yeah. and, mm-hmm. and lived in that house for oh fifteen eighteen years seventeen yeah and then it was right on the road and we were kind of tired of that and we found this spot here mm-hmm. so we put our place up for sale and sold it and then bought this place and. And then we had enough money, we could hire a couple of people to help us do yeah. this, you right. know. So we re, we rebuilt this place. But I mean, in the years that we've been here, we've lived in two brand new log houses, and they were paid for. Yeah, you know, when yeah. we moved in them. You know, we never had any house payments to make. Well, I don't know yeah. if they were finished when we moved. Well, in. <laughs> are finished. they ever <laughs> yeah. finished? Yeah. Enough. Are they ever yeah. finished? Yeah. Yes, I remember. Yeah. Well, yeah. we went years without electricity or running water. Yeah. That's not really finished. <laughs> and, or bathrooms. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was just you know, if you didn't have the money, you didn't get it. Yeah. Right. So we, then when we you're, finally what, got a we got a hand pump, pump a hand pump oh, put yeah. in the backyard so we didn't have to drive two miles down to the oh, closest man. creek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To fill the buckets up with water and bring home. And it seemed like every time I'd turn around my water jug in the kitchen was empty. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd take my plastic jug out the back door and go to the pump and it took thirteen pumps to get the prime <laughs> up to yeah. get it going. Yeah. And I'm kinda going around. <laughs> and then pretty soon I start shaming myself and saying, are you kidding? You are so lucky. You have a well. You have a pump. You have arms to mm. pump. You have legs. To... And by the time I got that jug full, I was so happy I didn't <laughs> carry it into my kitchen. So you were able to maintain an attitude of gratitude yes, throughout Yes, and it. that is the secret to, to yes. a lot. Yes. 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 It's Agreed. like, you think you got it bad? Are you kidding? Yeah. We've got it made. Yeah. I mean, it might take a little more work. Right. But if you realize the differences, it's okay. This is becoming an ongoing theme. Every time we have guests on the podcast, it seems that there, we always come back to maintaining this attitude of just being grateful for what it is that you have and, and yes. reminding yourself of that. And yeah. that, that attitude carries you a very long way. It's very important. For yes. What are you going to do in life? I mean, there's ups and downs in life mm-hmm. and there's bumps and there's bruises, but some people have more reason for that. Than, yes. I mean, to complain than I do. I've had it good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's been good. We've worked hard. So your, your, your backstory sounds very similar to ours. Um, we, so we both quit our jobs and we sold our home back in Washington state because we felt called to Idaho for much of the same reason that you mentioned with, with just freedom and living out the life that we had always dreamt up Mm -hmm. for ourselves. Uh, we moved to a, a, a bare land, which we had purchased. Um, we had some cash that we brought along with us from the sale of our, our home and we've been I'm just reestablishing things over time and working very hard. We didn't have power or uh, mm-hmm. a, a, <laughs> running water, <laughs> running water or a potty. Yeah. So when you mentioned <laughs> filling up jugs of water, it, it uh, definitely resonates. But yeah, you know, laundry day. I was I like, know. get the water. <laughs> I know. But 
you can do it. Yes. But I can tell you, as you get older, it gets harder to do it. Mm-hmm. So work on getting it easier as you get older. Yes. Because yeah. you'll need it more then. Yeah. That's great advice. Yeah, we got a flushing toilet back about a year ago mm-hmm. after two and a half years of, of the pail system. With six people in the dead of winter, <laughs> that was his job. <laughs> we got the outhouse. Yeah, an outhouse, outhouse would have been are, good. Oh, they're wonderful. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they're great. You know, oh, and Tom a lot laughs. of people go, "Ooh, I can't do that." I go, "It's amazing what you can do if you have to." Yeah, I absolutely. Been grateful and for that. Yeah. yeah, and it's good to push yourself in your limitations mm-hmm. and and seek out you know yeah. what's what's not necessarily the most comfortable option for yourself. I, know, I think I've, I've had. A lot of times where I hauled water or I pumped water, and so water is precious. Yes. Water, yeah. without water, you're stopped. Water is life. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so, you know, now I have running water, and I've had a girlfriend over one day that was doing dishes, and she's just letting it run, and I'd reach up and turn it off. <laughs> she's just letting I said, you've never hauled water. Yeah. <laughs> it's very true. I know. Yeah. So but let me ask, right? be, yeah. being that you came out here, given where you started, did you have your own uh, internal fears and trepidations about things, or, or did you rely upon uh, uh, something to, to, to keep you trudging forward to moving along? I had no fears. I had no thoughts of defeat or, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? I was in love with Tom. We were having fun. We were young and strong. Uh, coming to beautiful country hmm. never crossed my mind wow. that anything would be bad. Wow. So what about? And we just okay. dove in and went for it. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. How about you, Tom? Yeah, it was, it was pretty easy. Yeah. Really. I mean, like, we had a way to make a living. I mean, we didn't make a very good living, mm-hmm. but we always did. You know, there was mm-hmm. always something coming in, you yeah. know, and and we could do that without having to drive to town or depend on somebody else, you mm-hmm. know, other than mm-hmm. the people we we sold our finished products to. That right. was the the biggest thing is, is find, finding them people to, to buy our stuff. You right. Know? Yeah. But at first, we, we got into just tanning buckskins. Mm-hmm. And we, we learned that the only people that really are into brain tan buckskins nowadays are the, are the black powder people that are still shooting the old muzzle loaders and right. they want to dress like the old mountain men did. Yeah. So we started going to mountain men rendezvous mm-hmm. and selling our buckskins. There. Mm-hmm. And the people would buy them, and and the biggest problem was with that is most people that wanted to wear these buckskins clothes and stuff didn't have the ability to make them, mm-hmm. and all that stuff is all hand sewed. Mm-hmm. So after several years of just trying to sell the skins, now we're starting to sell the skins to people and taking measurements and making them into clothing, mm-hmm. you know, and that was. That was kind of a big jump for us because mm-hmm. it made our buckskins worth a whole bunch more when yeah. they were all all hand sewn. Mm-hmm. And we made like another that. paycheck after our after doing the original work. Yeah. We yeah. got another paycheck out of those buckskin clothes orders. Do yeah. you do all the beadwork? He does too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Who did? Tom, oh, man, that's beautiful. I did that back in 1976. Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, he's been strange at least that long. <laughs> we like strange. Yeah. Strange is good. It's our people. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I got to say, in watching the show and becoming a, a, a massive fan of the both of you, and you, you alluded to this a few minutes ago, that things become harder the older you get. Mm-hmm. I don't always see that. I, I, I get that. not there it, yet. Maybe so, but I'm so impressed and inspired by the both of you and what it is that you managed to accomplish at... Um, at, I hope this doesn't at sound old. horrible. At an older age, eighty and seventy-six. Eighty old. and seventy-six. Would you say <laughs> oldest we've ever been? <laughs> so let me ask: What That's does it, what does it feel like to be eighty and seventy-six? I feel older in the last year and a half than I ever have. Really? I mean, it's just getting harder to split wood. Mm-hmm. It's getting harder to walk up these hills. Yeah. Um, Getting, just getting harder to do things, but you got to keep trying mm-hmm. or you won't be able to. Is that ever a source of frustration for either one of you? Yeah, I don't know. Not to the point where it makes me unhappy. I mean, sure. it's like, gosh. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, but in the moment. 
Yeah. What are you going to do? That's success. We're this old. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. When my 80th birthday hit, I thought to myself, well, you're an old man. You know, it was the first time that's really dawned on me. You mean all the times that I say, hey, old man, hasn't been (laughs) singing in? I guess guess not. We got company. Who is it? I don't know. It might be my brother. Oh. We can we can pause this. That's yeah, no big do you deal. Pause it? Okay. Okay, we'll take a pause. Yeah. Okay, so we are back. Um, Tom's brother Jack stopped by. He has a skunk problem <laughs> over at his place that they're going to be dealing with. So, a lot of fun. Anyway, before we left, what we were talking about was getting older and how that uh, yeah can be a source of momentary frustration, but really again, just an attitude of gratitude. It is, and there's absolutely no way you can explain to a younger person what it gets like. I mean, they can see you going hobbly, 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 but right. It's it's an gotta interesting. Gotta be in them shoes, you know. Yeah. So we both turned forty this year, so we are just now beginning to feel the effects of yeah. uh, some aging. We and... can hardly remember forty. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but you you serve as such good. a you serve as such a source of inspiration, at least at least for myself, and I think it's why so many people are are attached to the both of you is because of what you're doing, the life that you're uh, leading for yourselves at, at an older age. It's it's incredibly impressive. One thing that really scares me is. What are we going to do when we can't do this? Mm. Where are we going to go? Yeah. I don't want to think about it. Yeah. I figure I'll just cross that bridge when I get there. Sure. Mm -hmm. Like old Custer told them. Oh, Tom. (laughs) Save the last bullet for yourself. (laughs) That doesn't sound good. (laughs) My grandpa used to say everybody should have a little black pill, and when life is no good, you could take your pill and go to sleep. That sounds better than the custer. Yeah. <laughs> Good old custer. Just yeah. say, all right, I'm done. But I don't know. It's hard to put yourself in that spot, too. It yeah. is. So looking back, do you think that there are things that you focused on at an earlier age that, that now, in retrospect, um, you, you have come to realize that it was, I don't want to say a waste of time, but it just you shouldn't have placed such an emphasis on it? Do you have anything like that that comes to mind? Uh, no, I think... You know, it's funny, this life. It's like, okay, we have been given choice, but yet sometimes things happen that you maybe didn't choose, but it makes some sense. Sometimes things happen that you didn't choose at all. Mm -hmm. And you may take a trail. You've got your main trail. You take a trail, a little diversion off of that trail, but I think you go back, and it's like everything falls in place. Mm -hmm. Like you guys, look at what you wanted to do and there you are and it's got to be something else than just choice because things come up in front of you that take you to where you're supposed to go sometimes mm-hmm. so i'm trusting in that yeah well, i don't know luck, let life be life <laughs> i yeah. don't know mm. but when it gets harder as you get old <laughs> when we first moved here from illinois we lived in downtown troy in somebody's backyard in a little cabin, a little two or three room cabin. Ed Lozar's place, yeah. Uh-huh. And I run into I run into this old trapper. We made a day. I I went to this guy's house. I heard about this guy. Went and knocked on the door and introduced myself. And he invited me in. His wife was making cookies, and we spent the whole day and talking about trapping because. There was lots of new critters out in this country that I could trap that I'd never trapped before. So I wanted to find out about some of this stuff. And we we spent the whole day talking, and he's telling me about, he says, yeah, I got a cabin up in the yak where I go in the wintertime and trap up there. And... We left after What's that. What's the yak? Yeah. yeah. We, we ended up... We drove up the yak, and we found this guy's cabin. Meantime, the old guy dies. Mm. Hmm. And we get to thinking, he's got that cab. His wife owns that cabin up in the yak. Mm -hmm. It was a neat-looking place, you know. Mm -hmm. So I went to the widow and and asked her if she'd rent it to us, and she did. Oh. Wow. Forty forty dollars a month. Wow. <laughs> and we we moved in it. And it had a propane lights, propane stove, 
an up-propane wood stove. refrigerator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a wood stove. And a wood stove. Mm-hmm. And Kitchen table. Two rooms. Wow. It was just two rooms. Was all it was. What was it, like 16 by 16 maybe? Mm-hmm. We were so excited. <laughs> yeah. I can live in that. In the woods. That's awesome. So we we ended up, we rented it from her for three or four months. And then she came up with a deal where she wanted to sell it mm-hmm. to help. Her, ner- her niece through nursing school. Oh, wow. Mm. So we ended up, we bought the place from her for $5,000. Wow. Acre and a half. Acre and a half with this little cabin on it. It was all set up to live in. And you think, wow, you got that for 5000 <laughs> Well, they bought it 15 years before that for 500 <laughs> <laughs> They did good. Tenfold their money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we were all happy about mm-hmm. that. And we got out of Lozar's backyard. Yeah, moved, moved, moved to, to the, the woods. Yeah, yeah, and we were out here in the woods. Ever since. And yeah. we, our taxes were $38 a year. Wow. wow. <laughs> Boy, is that... Times change. have changed. Yes, they have. <laughs> yeah, there's no... There, you can't buy anything for $5,000. No, so. not even a vehicle. No. 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 Yeah. <laughs> not even close. At least not that you're going to get far in. No, <laughs> no, that's true. We just had to that's get That's what started us in the yak. Yeah. Yeah. And then we ended up on that acre and a half. We ended up, we built a log house, a big log house out of that place. And that's, we lived there for 15, 18 years. Mm. And then we had the main road, though, went right in front of our house. Yeah. But we never really liked that. Nancy was the one that, Bitched about it the most. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they started to cut up the property way behind us to sell off. And that's Mm -hmm. where I'd cross-country ski and Mm -hmm. I'd go for my walks. This was my woods. Yeah. And they're going to sell it and it's going to be yards? Are you Mm -hmm. kidding? I said, I got to move. I can't do this. He says, well, quit your griping and put some for sale signs up. So I put three of them up. (laughs) We ended up moving up here. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I was going to say, again, it sounds familiar. Our, our old house back in Washington was right, right on the main road. And it was so by, you Oh, it was our biggest source of frustration yeah. by far. And I finally, I kept calling him at work. Like, we got to sell it. Yeah. We got to move. And he's like, just put it for sale. And uh-huh. that sucker Same sold thing. the yeah. first weekend. Yeah, it's so funny. But he had a lot of trepidations about moving, which is why we were wondering if it was different, if it's just like the women well, are adventurous, like, let's go. And It was different in the sense that we had built that house. We hand dug that foundation. We yeah. mixed the cement and poured it with coffee cans into our wow. forms. I mean, we did it all, peeled the logs, had a gin pole to put them up and come alongs to crank them up poles wow. to get them in place. And hand split all the took shakes. Us, took us five, five years. years wow. Wow. We moved into it. Wow. Before yeah. we moved in, and yeah. and then it wasn't done. And then sometimes we'd have to have to tan deer hides to make money yeah. to get us through, you know. And so you couldn't work mm-hmm. on the house, you know. You'd have mm-hmm. to, mm-hmm. or else sometimes I'd go off and plant hire trees. on to the Forest Service to plant trees yeah. right. in the spring. I did some of that. When too. you had the money, it was because you were working. You didn't have the ho- time to work on the house to build. Yeah, yeah. and when you're working on the house, there goes the money. So then you stop because you don't have the money to buy the next thing you might need. Right. It's kind of a shuffle back and forth. But, but you guys serve well, as a great did, example. Of, we, I mean, did, we did things like God, we built that house, I think, for $13,000 yeah. or something. Yeah. But we did we did things like we split our own shakes that we covered the roof That's... with it. And, you know, I mean, everything was... Got old used <laughs> windows. Yeah. 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 <laughs> on the ridge pole. It was a lot like this house with the gable ends and the ridge. We got mm-hmm. the ridge pole up, but we had a hangman's noose where you could go up in the loft. Mm-hmm. There was a hangman's noose there, and when I'd get mad at him, I'd go. <laughs> <laughs> Just a warning. Yeah. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> it's like a people's version of the frying pan. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've got pictures of us. We were up on the roof. I think we were just putting tar paper down or something. Yeah. And you said to me, look at these trees. They're all golden in the fall. I'm supposed to be hunting, not putting tar paper down. <laughs> oh. I know the feeling. Yeah. yeah. This, again, sounds familiar. Yeah. Get the tar paper down and go hunting. 
<laughs> yeah, construction, it gets, uh, it weighs on you yeah. and it's hard it's on your hard. body yeah. and, mm-hmm. and it's mundane. Mm-hmm. When all of a sudden you're looking at one project and you're like, we're going to work on this for two weeks. Here we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. And when you get that done, it just opens the oh, door yeah. for two more Another things one. they had to yep. do. Yep. Or you Correct. look around and there's yep. 50 unfinished things yep. and it becomes yep. so overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, we had, the house wasn't done, but we had some friends coming out to go hunting and Tom looked at me one day, he says, you know, we don't move into our house. They're going to stay in it. <laughs> <laughs> so we moved out of the cabin into there. I was shuffling things over. Yeah. yeah. And they stayed in the cabin. We stayed in the house. Yeah, it's, a, it's very tempting once you get that house to a certain point to not move in. But then once you move in, you stop seeing it's, things yes. Yes. that need to be finished. I know, <laughs> but it's harder. Life, you know, it takes you longer to build all the cupboards and the closets and oh, everything than it did the whole house. So yes. I hate finished work. Yeah, so I hate it. Mm-hmm. So you, think it's, it. you think it's finished, but yeah. it's not. You know? no. yeah. It's never ending. The we shell know. is fun because it, it's... It's coming together. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And the finishing work. And then we did the fireplace. Mm-hmm. His mother sent him an article on Count Rumford fireplaces where it's this big box and it heats well. And oh, everything. yeah. So we went and gathered rock and did all that. That's that incredible. Good. It's almost like you guys were born 200, 300 oh, no years. Yeah, yeah, you got a point there. <laughs> yeah, like you, you would have been the best pioneers. <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell you, I don't know how they lived in them little soddy houses in the wood and the mm. dirt. I mean, out in the plains. I mean, yeah. oh my gosh, no, just yeah, and yeah. wind. I wonder how people ended up in like North Dakota. I That's where their th- wagons broke. <laughs> yeah, is that is that the only reason, or they were just sick of traveling? I mean, it's and beautiful like, in its own way, but I don't oh, know it's live cold. There. Yeah, I lived in North Dakota, um, right outside of Winnipeg, for three and a half years, and just the wind would howl, and it was so cold, and there were no trees. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 But, you know, the people that live there love it. That's their home. Yes. People come here and it's so claustrophobic with all the mm-hmm. trees. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt that when we first came here. It's like, oh, this is really close. You can't it? see the sky. Yeah. 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 You can't see the, the sunset. The sun goes down. The sun comes up at 9 o'clock in right. the morning. Yeah. Right. In the morning you know? <laughs> yes. So yeah. you don't get to see that That's sun why, up and sun mm-hmm. down. Yeah. So. That's why everybody doesn't live there or here. We all spread yeah. out and find yeah. our spot. Yeah. 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 Yeah, everyone just kind of finds a place, and it's mm-hmm. like, this is home, mm-hmm. which was the yak for you guys. Mm-hmm. I think that's great. As we were driving out here, I was thinking, maybe we didn't move for enough out. Like, this is so nice out here. I love this. <laughs> and you don't have school to deal with. See, that's yeah. the problem here is a lot of people come, but they've got school, and mm-hmm. that's, a, That'd be that's hard. a hard one. Yeah. yeah. Nope. It used to be in the olden days that folks that lived in the yak that had children that had to have high school and stuff mm-hmm. that age. They would have family in town, and the mm-hmm. kids would just go stay with family and then come home on weekends. Oh, we but now it's like teenagers <laughs> nobody wants those kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, It's a changed world, and that's yeah. a heavy responsibility to have mm-hmm. somebody's precious child. Yeah, that's very but true. Do you feel those changes, living as isolated as you guys do? You mentioned you don't have the internet. You don't go online. You have TV, but you don't watch it extensively, it sounds like. Do you still feel the weight of the uh, the state of transition of, of things? Because you still catch wind of it, I, must, I assume, somehow. News. Well, we feel uh, left behind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, huh? Mm-hmm. I, we don't know how to do that. Right. But I know I, know I could learn because I do have a brain. Mm-hmm. I give myself that much credit, but yeah. I don't want to learn. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want it. Yeah. I got just, other things to do, or that, that I want. Just to do. kind of the thing when all this he internet and stuff mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. started coming out, and all our friends were getting it. And oh man, you mm-hmm. ought to get this. <laughs> we looked at one and thought we don't even want to do yeah. that. So that's been our deal. It isn't that it isn't that we couldn't do it. It's just we didn't want to do Choose it. So we have we well, got better things to do. We have do Connie yes. or Dan that we that will research something for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, look this up. Right. Or can you order this mm-hmm. if it's something online? But we've never turned one on. Yeah, yeah you folks I, are hard I, to find. Occasionally, <laughs> occasionally um, when you're busting yourself to soreness, tan and hide, you think, well, maybe I should just go to town and get a job. So I'd go to town and I'd go here and I'd go, no, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want to do that. So I'd come home with scrape hides. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so much freedom in that. And you get to wake up and ease into your day. Have yes, your coffee. Just I know. sit on the couch and talk every morning. Mm-hmm. There's there's so much 
it's, I don't think I could go back Mm-mm. to like get up and go no. and no. leave and divide and conquer. Like, it's, it's a good life and it allows you to focus on what's, what's truly important to, to you yeah. individually, I guess is how I feel. But mm-hmm. given that you guys don't take part in any of that, what is it like to actually be a, a ongoing character in a television show? Is that odd for you? Was it odd initially? Very odd. Yeah. Are you used to it now? Well, I've relaxed to it. Yeah. Um, it's like we still do the same strange kind of living. Mm-hmm. And it's like somebody's peeking in the window at us right. and they enjoy it. Yeah. I don't get it. But yeah. yet, I guess one of the neat things about it is Tom is a good teacher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's important to him to teach something that somebody may have an interest in mm-hmm. and that we do. And, and that's neat. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. I'm more of a hide on the sidelines kind of person. Right. Yeah. He was at seven years old in front of an audience. I was still hiding behind my mother's skirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, there's, it is what it is. Yeah. Just, just do it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I think you've inspired a lot of people through just showing what you do because these arts die out if mm-hmm. people don't continue them. And if mm-hmm. kids don't watch and say, that's neat, I want to learn how to do that. And then they become the next wave of it. So I think that's really, really neat to, he was like, our kids were just excited to see someone else working with hides and stuff and, and look what you can make and the beadwork and see, that's and the good part. Making bows yes. and, We've had so many good stories from people. Um, and if you can, well, first, if you can make somebody happy by them watching you, yeah, that's a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. You got to find some happy, you got to mm-hmm. find something that you enjoy watching, but the teaching thing is good. And we've had wonderful, one, la- one grandmother got hold of us one day, and, or maybe she wrote, it's been a while. She said she wanted to thank us. She said my grandson would just sit on the couch and play those games, and he was getting fat and out of shape, and he wouldn't go outside, and he started watching Tom. She said pretty soon he's out in the backyard and in the woods chasing squirrels. <laughs> She was thrilled. Yeah. Yeah, just to see kids outside doing. Yeah, that's awesome. That's one a great story. Yeah. yeah. One other man that I'll never forget his story, he said his, his son was 16, and he had some younger children, and they'd watch mountain men. Well, the 16-year-old was waiting for his buddy to come and pick him up. And they used to go, to back it up, they used to go canoeing in the Boundary Waters canoe area or something. And they're from Minnesota. Yeah, okay. and, and pretty soon the 16-year-old, I don't want to do it. I don't want to go. And the dad was kind of bummed because it was something they'd done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so anyway, the kid's buddy was supposed to come pick him up. And the dad and the other kids were watching Mountain Men. And the buddy didn't show up. And pretty soon the kid's kind of going like that. <laughs> and then a couple of episodes later, the, the kid said, Dad, next time we're going canoeing, can I go? And that just thrilled the dad, of yeah. course, to yeah. bring yeah. him back together yeah. with his son. That's to awesome. Do those memories, you know? right? Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So. It yeah, is. there's a lot of good to come from it. Jeremy yeah, and Kaimani, he's our older boy. He's 13. They've they're trying to hunt for the first time this year with with Kaimani, and he keeps. They'll sit there and they'll see them, but it's not a good shot, and he's so discouraged. So yeah, I was telling me like you know you don't get something every time, so it's really good for him to mm-hmm. see yeah. on the episodes and stuff where people come back empty-handed. Yeah. 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 And the One patience. little gal said, it's nice to Tom, it's nice to see you don't get angry when you don't get what you want. Mm. Oh, so her father might have an anger issue. <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> what <laughs> a, what a great observation, side. though, yeah. on her part. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Um, so, yeah, they, they call it hunting, not shooting. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yep. that's, what that's what I told them. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, He's like, I like but you got to enjoy the adventure of it. Right. Yeah. And that's part of the whole hunting is the being there, mm-hmm. the listening to everything else. It was a young guy came up hunting up here and he was sitting, his buddy put him out in a clear cut to watch or something. And he said, I was sitting there quiet. And he says, I kept hearing this funny sound. I couldn't figure out what it was. He says, it was my heart beating. Uh, <laughs> it was so quiet. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Or, and excitement maybe. Yeah. But he was just shocked. It was so quiet. Mm-hmm. I think there's been such a disconnect in the world that we all live in now, and it mm-hmm. happens so quickly. When we, when we were kids, there was no internet, and now mm-hmm. there's artificial intelligence. Like it, it's gotten so weird so fast, and I feel it like people really are starting has. to crave yeah. the connection back to the earth and back to nature. And well, like, lots of people. I mean, that we hear from people all the time. You know that 
that say that, you yeah. know, that so neat that, that I kind of connect them back to the old yeah. times. Mm-hmm. You know? I hope the pendulum swings back. I don't know. I don't know. It will for some. Yeah. yeah. It will for some. And uh, But there's a lot of people today that don't even see much nature. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's true. It's very true. Jungles, yeah. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times if you're stuck by yourself somewhere or something, and then, you know, just go sit outside sometime and listen to out there. Mm -hmm. You'll hear a sound and you go, what made that? And there's a whole communication Mm -hmm. out there Mm -hmm. that alarms. You can hear, why is that squirrel chattering? You know, and why is that bird, you know, cackling at something? You know, well, there's probably a hawk out there. Yeah. You know, little warnings. And it's just really good to. Take time to listen yeah. and to feel that. Yeah, it's it's healing in it a way, is. and it it's, feeds your soul. It really does. There's I something know. that's so innately like it, it's it's just natural, and it's what's supposed to be. It's one of the things that we're supposed to be yeah. in tune with. And we're like like you were just remarking about listening, and we do that all the time on our property. We're just hearing the turkeys, the turkeys and the squirrels and calling to each night. other, and yeah, all the turkeys everything. flew it's, up in the tree last night, and he went, "What's go, down there?" And we all yes, like, yeah, yeah, it's intentional. What made that? Right. Yeah. I know. One time. Uh, the, a robin nest way up high, and one of the babies was on the ground. And Tom said, "Here you go. Oh, gee, thanks. You know, he's got a <laughs> tail about that long. You know." So anyway, I called him Rob, <laughs> and so I was, I went down towards the stream bed because, and it was hot out, and to get near some moist soil to try to dig up some worms. And so I'm down there, and I got my little shovel, and I'm digging, and I'm squatted down on the ground. I can smell the earth, you know, as I'm mm-hmm. digging and looking for worms for this little bird. And I can smell the earth and everything, and all of a sudden I heard a, a chatter or something. And it was the oldest primitive feeling I've ever, well, one mm-hmm. of the oldest primitive feelings. I just went, mm-hmm. what's that? Yeah. What's coming? And I felt primitive. Yeah. It yeah. was very strange. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Even here as we speak to each other, you know, we got the birds flying out there and it's it's a it's a beautiful place and a beautiful spot you guys have uh, found here and beautiful life you have made for yourselves. And it's Yeah, it's, we're content to be here. Yeah, it's just so refreshing to hear from other folks who um, appreciate the little things, like mm-hmm. the things that you're, you know, you're bringing up here. Yeah. So. I so, can just hope yeah. that some of the people that don't get it, yes. don't have that, can find it even if it's just in a park. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Or in their little somebody's backyard or mm-hmm. something because I think it's important to have that nature in everybody mm-hmm. um, that connection to what's growing and real and yes. we're yeah. living on yes um, makes everything else seem give them something they like yeah it makes everything else kind of melt away and seem so trivial yeah well times. you can you can get on this hamster wheel of life if you're just waking oh, yes. up and you're commuting yeah. and you're getting your kids from and you go to sports and then you eat and then you do it all over again and you can lose that intentional living when you live out where there's bear and cougar and you have to you can't just go walking through your yard without looking around or listening think about it yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. and it it keeps life real and it It keeps you grounded keeps you aware you're not in a fog going through your day Mm -hmm. because it's not safe to be (laughs) yeah you you see the horse's ears perk up and you go out there to what what are they looking at yeah what are they looking at Mm -hmm. that's the stuff yeah Yeah. that's the stuff that's in nature that yeah there's a whole i mean the sun goes down and we all come in the house to do our evening Mm -hmm. whatevers and there's a whole different wake up outside yeah almost a whole feeding frenzy going on Mm -hmm. up there Mm -hmm. at night and then you get up and you don't think much about Mm -hmm. it unless you have a skunk in your yard or you have those bobcat bobcat tracks tracks. yeah (laughs) tracks i mean then you go stuff's been going on here yeah Yeah. that you're not even aware not even aware of you're in the house yep we were in the house and actually have a dog that barks yes our dog he just barks at everything now (laughs) he's dead sometimes believe him (laughs) yeah 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 he's alerted us to stuff but the the horses are the best alert system now Mm -hmm. because they're so paranoid anyway and yeah Mm -hmm. And got good noses yeah. and good eyes. Yes. We were Ears. in yes. the kitchen and the kids were outside and the horses were pointing at something. They had their foot up and they were really snorting and everything. And we looked over and there was a bear mm-hmm. at the, between us and the kids. We were like, get up, walk backwards. They were watching, um, we had a projector and they were watching Forrest Gump 
on the side of the barn. Uh, oh, and wow. the bear was attracted to the colors. Uh, and the movement. Yeah, so he was sitting by a Juneberry bush, just pulling the berries down, sitting there like Having Winnie the Pooh. Having a snack and watching the movie. Eating the berries. <laughs> and so the kids got up and they walked inside and we were all staring at this bear out the kitchen window. And he sat there and watched the remainder of the movie, <laughs> pulling the bush It's a great down. movie, to be <laughs> fair. It's a great yes, movie. Yes, it is, it is. <laughs> but the horses were just going nuts, but he didn't have any ill intention towards the kids. He just wanted to see what this colorful... He wanted those berries and that yeah. was yeah. just happening <laughs> while I'm getting them. Yeah. Like popcorn at the movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. It brings in the deer and everything. Everyone's really interested in of the... Huh. So I guess for yeah. hunting, you just play a projector movie <laughs> and they'll come. Yeah. yeah, it's been a funny thing to watch. Oh, that is weird, huh? Yeah, the sheep come over, everything comes over to... Curious. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. That wasn't there yesterday. <laughs> It, it's simple pleasures, but it's real. Mm -hmm. And you go to bed exhausted and dirty and tired and, and good. Like it's good. It feeds the soul. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. Life's a trip. Yeah. It is. It's an adventure. It should yeah. be anyway. Yeah. You guys. I feel badly for those that don't have the good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hope they can find it. Yeah. yeah. So what is, what is your number one advice for, for younger folks? Number one advice. If you're going to do something and it doesn't feel right inside, look again. And if it isn't right, back off and look closer. Question it. Because you don't want to really mess up. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of life ahead. So if it isn't right in your heart, mm -hmm. check it out. Mm -hmm. Maybe not do it. Yeah. Great advice. Yeah. Do what's right in your heart. Hmm? Or do what's right in your heart. You're right. But I'm just saying, you know, if you're hanging out with a bunch of kids and they're going to do something and you're going, that's not nice. Or mm -hmm. That isn't right. Or I wouldn't like that done to me. Yeah. Back out of there. Get away. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. there's a lot of good life ahead. Mm -hmm. But if you mess up bad, it's not good life ahead. Yeah. Right. Be careful. Life is precious. Mm hmm Indeed. Yeah. So what about you, Tom? What's your number one advice? Mm. Do what you're happy with. I mean, happiness is a pretty important thing mm -hmm. to do in life. You know, do what you what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. You know, hope it isn't criminal. <laughs> 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 hope you get off on a good one. <laughs> so so kind of like your sign right over our heads yes. here. Yeah, yeah. He is free who lives as he chooses. Does yeah. that sum it up nicely? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. That is yeah. him. Love it. I yeah. love that quote. And never give it up. Huh? <laughs> yeah. And it's not everybody can do the life we've had. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, there's things that Well, most people wouldn't want to do well, I know. I don't mean yeah. exactly. Yeah. But a lot of people, and I, and I get that, they, they are tied to responsibility, yes. mm -hmm. to family, to job, to, and all that. So if you have to stay on that, well, then find something good for you that intermingles with that to make you okay with that. Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Because yeah. even being self-employed hasn't always been fun. No. No. Yeah. no like very stressful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stressful. Yeah. you got to keep going. You can't turn away and quit. You can't mm -hmm. just call in sick. You can't, mm -hmm. I mean, you just got to keep doing what you're supposed to do because you got an order for something. Mm -hmm. Got to get it done. And, yeah. But there's a good thing in there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Finding that balance is a difficult part because you do mm -hmm. have to be self-driven, but then you can become obsessed. Yes. And then you don't know when to shut mm -hmm. it off. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's, it's a hard thing mm -hmm. to find the balance. But balance is important. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You want to wind it down on that yeah. note? We won't, we won't take up any more of your time. We just we so appreciate you opening your home to oh, us. How very nice of you guys to come up and to meet you. Yeah, and thank you for not yelling at me for calling your home phone when I... <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's <laughs> what it's there for. And leaving messages and then calling back. Yeah, and somebody then I called, you. somebody yeah. called last night. Somebody called last night. And Nancy answered the phone, and she said, well, here's Tom. And she handed me the phone. He was nuts. And this guy, I can't believe it. This is Tom? You know, how could it be Tom? I just called his phone. You wow. know, why should this be you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's funny. Strange the poor that, guy. That they, they, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And then sometimes he'll say to me, well, I'm the mountain man. I go, that doesn't work with me, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a starstruck, huh? No. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But I don't really mind talking to people that like you. Yeah. I mean, it That's isn't true. like people are calling up saying, you son of a bitch. I hate your show. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's everybody loves it. You know, yeah. so it's, it, it's, a, it's complimenting for talker. me. To <laughs> yeah. Talk. It's a good, it's a good feeling. We we say the same thing. There's people that recognize us from from the stuff we do online, and it's always so. Uh, it's it's nice to have people respond favorably and be happy yes. to see you. Yeah. You know, yes. it's it, it feels good. Yeah. Yeah, we do have a lot of people say, "Oh, we saw you." We didn't want to say hi. And it's like, well, that's even creepier because then you're just watching yeah, us through really, the child. Really. Like, just come say hi. Uh, and there you go. Yeah. 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 That I, shouldn't be taboo. We're no different than you guys. We just do something different. Right. Than yeah. you do. Right. But being on TV just feels like it's TV. <laughs> it plays a weird trick on your brain when you it see does. people from a screen, I think. I, I mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We've had a lot of talks about that, too. Yeah. It's a... Uh, it's a weird thing. Yeah. Anyway, we don't want to take up your entire afternoon. You got to go help your brother, but we are so grateful to you. Like, uh, <laughs> like Melissa said, you guys are a, a massive source of inspiration. I honestly don't don't think that we'd be living. You guys played a role in our lives. I don't uh -oh. think we'd be living the life that we are living currently had it not been for coming across the show and uh, the two of you. So thank you for the inspiration and motivation. Really appreciate it. And uh, thank you once again for allowing us into your home. No problem. Thank you and thank you. Thank All you. right. Thank you guys. <laughs> That's going to do it for this episode of GSL Uncut. We want to thank you once again for being here and our sincere thanks to Tom and Nancy for allowing us into their home to share in a conversation. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and also leave a comment down below. We appreciate you and we'll be back next week with another episode.